In this session, we are going to discuss structure charts and what are the different components will be required while drawing the structure charts will be discussed in this session and what is the difference between this DFD and structure chart also that will be covered. So, structure chart is a chart derived from the data flow diagram. So, in the earlier video we have discussed the data flow diagram. So, this video is in the continuation of that. So, it represents the system into more details than DFD. It breaks down the entire system into lowest functional module. So, that is the main issue. So, it will it will have some representation where the lowest functional modules will be derived and describes functions and sub functions at each module of a system to a greater detail which was absent in case of our DFD. So, structure chart represents hierarchical structure of modules and each layer a specific task is performed. So, let us go with some diagrams for the better understanding. So, here are the symbols used in the construction of the structure chart. So, let us start our discussion with module. So, it represents process or subroutine or a task. So, a model is nothing but a process or it can be also called as a subroutine or a task. A control module branches to more than one sub modules. So, whenever we are having some conditional statements are there, some, some conditions are there, then depending upon the condition true and false, it will be having multiple branches. So, library modules are reusable and invocable from any module. So, where the library, library means where we, where we will be having some predetermined function bodies, the predetermined function bodies will be there in the library and that very library module can be referred by multiple different other modules as when required, so it is reusable. So, just consider this one here we are having this control module and from where the controls can be transferred to multiple different modules. So, these are the sub modules and this is our library module. Let us we are going for the condition. So, it is represented by a small diamond at the base of the module. So, now you see this module is nothing but a process or a subroutine or a certain task and here you see in case of structured charts the modules are getting represented using one rectangle, but whenever some condition is there then this diamond will be there at the bottom of this module. And it depicts that the control module can select any one, any one of the subroutine based on some condition true or false. So, this condition is there. So, depending upon the condition true or false, so which module is going to get executed will going to get the control and that will be decided. So, now also we have the jump. An arrow is shown pointing inside the module to depict that the control will jump in the mod in the middle of the sub module. So, now here you see this particular line is in the middle of this module. So, it is denoting a jump. So, this sort of representations can can happen in our structure charts. So, loop a curved arrow represents loop in the module all sub modules covered by loop repeat execution of the module. So, this is our loop. So, that is one curve is there you can find this one. So, this is denoting a loop in the model. Now, the next one is our data flow. A directed arrow with empty circle at the end represents the data flow. So, now here you can find there is an empty circle and this directed arrow is denoting the data flow between these two modules. And the last one is our control flow. So, a directed arrow with a field circle at the end represents the control flow. So, we are having the data flow, we are having this control flow. The basic difference here is that in case of data flow, this circle is empty, but in case of control flow, this circle is filled up. So, in this way, we had so many different symbols, so many different symbols we have discussed. So, there we are having this model. And then here we are having this condition, this condition depending upon the condition whether this condition is true or false, either one of the module will get executed. Then we are having this jump, this control line has come within this particular rectangular box. So, that is a jump statement and this is our loop, we know this is a circle which is having the arrow head is denoting the loop and here you see within this particular this arc, this is these two modules are included. So, that means these two modules will go on repeating along with this iteration and looping. 
So, here we are having this data flow that is the empty circle with this arrow head and we are having this contour flow that is filled circle with the arrow head. So, in this way in our discussion we have discussed what are the different components of a structure chart and how to use this one. Thanks for watching this video. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.